Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Al-Qaeda terror outfit expanding its operation in India. Pakistan-backed Khalistan supporters continue hate campaign against India. And Indian security forces foil infiltration attempt by terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent AQIS is an Al-Qaeda affiliated terrorist organization founded in 2014 by Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri. The group is based in Pakistan but has threatened to also carry out operations in Afghanistan, India, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Banned in India under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act in 2019, AQIS is trying to establish its footprint by radicalizing and brainwashing the Indian youth. We have a report. Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, a wing of the Al-Qaeda founded by Osama bin Laden, is fast expanding its footprint in the Indian subcontinent. Recently, India's most wanted Al-Qaeda terrorist, Ikramul Haq, commonly known as Abu Talha, was arrested along with his wife in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka. He was possessing a fake Indian identity card. Known as Maulana Sabit within Al-Qaeda, his main task was to mislead the youth in India and recruit them for terror activities. Abu Talha, who is the top leader of the Dawa wing of Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent, has nearly a dozen terrorism-related cases registered against him in India. The growing footprints of Al-Qaeda in the Indian subcontinent is a cause of concern and poses a security threat in the region. Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent was actually formed with the aim of establishing a caliphate in South Asia. Now, from 2014 onwards, why there is a spike now in, uh, in India is that uh, the entry of terrorists in Kashmir has got stopped. The security grid in Kashmir is very strong and Kashmir has been on scanner for quite some time. So, therefore, they feel that it is too risky uh, to work there and also uh, they still feel that there is uh, a fair amount of people uh, who are disgruntled, who are radicalized and who can be lured uh, to become sleeper cells in other parts of the country. So, therefore, uh, you will find that there is an uh, effort to lure and it is not only in India, it was also there in Bangladesh, it is also there in Pakistan and Afghanistan too. So, uh, it is a phenomena in these areas. They are also targeting uh, the Australia as well as US and some other Western countries too. Indian security agencies busted Al-Qaeda's operation in India in March 2022 with the arrest of a Bangladesh-based terrorist from Assam. Subsequently, there have been more than 50 arrests all across India with their operative base in Bangladesh. In 2022, the anti-terrorism squad arrested eight AQIS members from Bhopal in Madhya Pradesh, some of them Bangladeshi nationals. In 2023, the anti-terrorism squad arrested four AQIS members from Gujarat, all Bangladeshi citizens, who too identified Abu Talha as their recruiter. In countries like Pakistan, AQIS has carried out assassinations of Pakistani military officials and anti-Al-Qaeda bloggers, but it has yet to carry out a major attack on Indian soil. Experts believe these outfits are even engaged in activities like creating social unrest and conflicts among people of different faiths. As of now, there is another uh, philosophy which the terrorists are adopting. Uh, they are finding that killing one or two person, it does not have that kind of impact if you can create a, 
uh, as compared to creating a social unrest in hinterland so therefore now most of the terrorist uh, including the pakistan sponsored terrorist and the proxy war is now shifting and gravitating a little more towards using the sleeper cells and creating a social unrest on on some uh, some of the issues uh, it can be hijab on one day it can be uh, let's say uh, uniform civil code on another day so pick up an agenda and create a social unrest through the sleeper cells that they feel is more impactful for a country like india since its formation al qaeda in the indian subcontinent has faced defeat not only in india but other parts of the subcontinent including bangladesh pakistan and afghanistan the outfit has failed to garner any traction but it is trying to mislead the youth to carry out anti-state activities and disrupt peace the security and intelligence agencies are now alert to thwart any attempt by the al qaeda terrorists to disrupt peace in the region let's move to india's jammu and kashmir where terrorists are continuing to make infiltration attempts from pakistan they bring arms and ammunition with a aim to carry out terror attacks and disrupt peace in the union territory alert security forces are foiling all their attempts to intrude into the indian territory and help maintain peace in the region we have a report on july 10th the indian army foiled a major infiltration attempt along the line of control in rajori district of jammu and kashmir and neutralized one terrorist During the search operation an AK47 rifle three AK magazines with 175 rounds a 9mm pistol and two magazines with 15 rounds four hand grenades communication equipment and a large quantity of eatables and clothes were recovered The Indian security forces have become more alert since Pakistan based terrorists have started using newer tactics to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir and disrupt peace in the region Amarnath yatra has commenced on the 1st of July and will continue for about 60 odd days. Pakistan definitely wants to embarrass India by creating chaos and mayhem, loss of property and loss of wealth as well as try and create communal violence by hitting Indian Hindus who are believers of Amarnath. All their efforts notwithstanding, all their new technology, new tactics, new strategies notwithstanding, the indian security forces made sure that he does not succeed under any circumstances whatsoever notwithstanding the fact that there's been increased op- i will say efforts by him according to sources and in intelligence agencies there are several terror camps operating in pakistan occupied kashmir and they infiltrate into the indian side with the help of pakistani security agencies The terrorists not only receive training but logistics help and weapons to carry out their activities in Jammu and Kashmir. The Indian security forces have unearthed several underground tunnels near the LOC used by terrorists to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir. The border security force in India is now using drone mounted ground penetrating radars to check the presence of underground tunnels used by terrorists. it is very important to understand that pakistan has today slipped into a state which is on the very edges of i will say a field state there is political instability there is economic instability there is military and security instability and there is diplomatically the pakistan has been cut off from everybody even it's under the watchful eyes of fetf it's been under the watchful eyes of Indi- international monetary fund it's in the watchful eyes of the world bank Pakistani benefactors have turned against them. The GCC countries no longer support Pakistan. All that notwithstanding, Pakistan continues to spend a phenomenal amount of money on terrorism and terrorist activities. Jammu and Kashmir is reaping peace dividends since the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in August 2019. There is massive development in the union territory which has been attracting investors in sectors like tourism, 
hospitality, retail and manufacturing. The development in Jammu and Kashmir is not fitting with the agenda of neighboring Pakistan and it helps terrorists to infiltrate into the Union territory and create unrest. The people of Jammu and Kashmir who have suffered for decades due to Pakistan-backed terrorism have condemned terrorism from all fronts. A bunch of pro-Khalistan supporters who are settled in Canada, UK, Australia and the United States continue to run an anti-India campaign to raise a fake demand of Khalistan, a separate Sikh nation. They have now adopted violent means to run this hate campaign and have started threatening Indian diplomats in those countries. We have the special report. The Khalistan movement, one of Pakistan's brainchild created to decimate India's image on foreign soil, still continues to flourish. They now blame Indian diplomats for the death of Khalistan Tiger Force Chief Hardeep Singh Nijjar, who was shot dead in the parking lot of a Gurudwara in Canada, Surrey, in June. Previously, Khalistan elements active in these countries had released several videos warning to launch a protest outside Indian embassies and consulates in Canada, Australia, UK and US on July 8. Recently, the pro-Khalistan separatists organized a protest outside the Indian consulate office in Toronto. While chanting anti-India slogans, Khalistan supporters even tried to provoke the Indian community, which was also there, to counter the anti-social activities of Khalistanis. Shashikant, the former Director General of Police who fought against Khalistan militants in Indian Punjab in the late 1980s says there are a bunch of separatists settled abroad and in India there are no takers of their illegitimate demand. It has been depicted, proved, shown time over again have no support for Khalistan, nobody in Punjab, nobody in India wants Khalistan because they have seen what exactly and what all we had gone through in 80s and nobody wants the repetition of that particular time. If the demand for Khalistan was genuine, it is not, but I'm saying just for the sake of argument, if it was genuine, then they would have said, yes, we want not only Lahore, but the entire Pakistan, which is um, entire Punjab, which is under the occupation of uh, Pakistan right now. And not only that area, even extending up to Afghanistan and all those countries. Lahore was the capital of Maharaja Ranjit Singh and his empire was right from this Punjab, which is in Pakistan, parts of our country also, extending even to Afghanistan and all those parts. So yes, if they are not asking for that particular region, it, it proves by itself that yes, it is a demand, it is a game plan which is being played and nurtured by Pakistan itself and they are trying to keep that territory away and just trying to create problems for us here in India. For a few months, the Khalistanis settled in the West have adopted violent means since after their so-called Khalistan referendum failed miserably. They are frequently holding anti-India protests, threatening Indian bureaucrats and attacking the Indian embassies abroad. It is a tactic by them to keep the Khalistan issue on the boil in those countries where they have taken shelter in the name of freedom of speech and expression. It also suits the agenda of Pakistan to demean India's reputation in the international community. Punjabi diaspora abroad is not a small segment, it's a massive section and they are contributing all their might for the development of their respective countries where they are living. This particular segment which is raising voices even abroad are just a small little fragment of the entire section of diaspora living in all these countries or maybe a respective country where they raise voice. And why do they raise their voice? They are raising this voice primarily on account of the monetary considerations monetary money isi certainly they are inimical to uh, india and uh, they have said it number of times that they want to 
inflict a thousand cuts on India. They want India to bleed. But again, we are not bleeding. We are a powerful and we are a strong country. We are not bleeding at all. So they give money to these sections abroad, a section of diaspora, the abroad, ISI is doing it, as also a section of persons living abroad. I'm talking of one or two persons in the diaspora who have this kind of monetary power. Basically, in one word, and one center, it is a money game which is going on abroad because of which these persons, they just raise their voices once in a while. But again, even there, there is no massive support. Like I said, you check up the number of people living there, diaspora living there, and uh, the number of persons who are raising this voice. It is absolutely minimal. A small section of people who had migrated from Punjab over three decades ago has kept the Khalistan ideology alive with financial and logistic help from Pakistan's inter-services intelligence. But the Indian diaspora settled in these countries are standing tall to counter the fake propaganda run by a bunch of Pakistan-backed Khalistanis. Countries like Canada, the US, the UK and Australia, which have a substantial Sikh diaspora, currently take the Khalistan propaganda for granted. All while not realizing that letting Khalistani ideology propagate in the name of freedom of speech and expression can have harmful consequences for them in the future. Recently, National Investigation Agency, NIA, busted an ISIS terror module in Maharashtra and apprehended four of its operatives. Not only Maharashtra, the banned terrorist group is propagating terrorism in India and operating its terror operations in different states of the country, including states like Kerala and Karnataka. Today, we are joined by former Director General of Police of Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Vikram Singh, to speak on this issue. Welcome to the show, sir. In recent days, NIA has busted many hideouts of the ISIS operatives from different parts of the country. Do you believe that Islamic State poses threat to India's security? That would be an understatement to say that ISIS is posing a threat. It was a threat not only to India but to the whole world now. And yes, to India it has a special threat and of course figures in the topmost priorities of the ISIS. Therefore, it will be in the fitness of things to put the best foot forward and neutralize the ISIS cadres. How the modus operandi of ISIS are different from other terror outfits? There is a world of difference. Apart from brutality, use of the social media, fake news, deep fake news and also the cohorts that pick up the best brains not only of the IT but also the foot soldiers, the ex-servicemen and also the silent slow poisoners. When I say the silent slow poisoners, they have a knack of picking out the disgruntled element in society, especially the youth. And then how to radicalize them, how best to slow poison their minds, rewire their minds is something that they have perfected over the years. To that extent, they are very different because they have technology, they have arms and ammunition, they have penetration of almost every segment of society and this is where the problem arises. Therefore, they are more poisonous and lethal than any other terrorist organization. Why the Islamic State is trying to make India as its base? Are they also trying to mislead the Indian youth to join ISIS? There is no doubt about it. India happens to be the topmost priority as I said earlier and why? Because India as a part of their mythology, Ghazwai Hind, they have divided India into four cadres. ISIS Jammu Kashmir, ISIS Dakhin, Deccan, ISIS Hind and they have divided and the southern provinces would be Kerala, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. And to divide India into the four sectors like the PFI, they said India 2047. 2047 they plan to make India into an Islamic state and the imposition of Sharia in place of other jurisprudence. Now for that motive they have patronized and put in every ounce of their energy for this design and for this conspiracy. And for this you may use they have used terror, they have used corruption, 
you have they have used politics they have used every tool in the arsenal to gain some leverage or foothold how alert are we to tackle the menace of islamic state in the indian subcontinent does india have enough support from its neighbors to tackle with isis threat india i think has given an excellent account of itself when i compare this with what has happened in europe especially uk and other countries i think india has given an excellent account of itself its prowess in technology intelligence collection sharing of intelligence with sister agencies about the neighboring countries the less said the better because i think we have been singularly lucky to have such neighbors who would not fail who would not hesitate to add fuel to the fire and i will stop at that but yes our neighbors primarily pakistan and bangladesh also happen to be the launching pads of the isis cadres thank you so much for the insight sir and with that we come to the end of this edition of news week south asia we'll be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com this is shivangi mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of news week south asia goodbye and take care